If you're a big swim team and you like to order a lot of gear, maybe you ought to check out Swim Outlet Team Division for these reasons. Swim teams receive a 10% discount on bulk orders. Swim teams or organizations get an 8% commission on referred sales. You'll also like their customization services, which is affordable and available at all times during the year for all team gear. With over 50,000 items in stock, you can get most anything you want. Swim Outlet Team Division. You need to try it out. You'll be glad you did. This is the Morning Swim Show for Tuesday, October 29th, 2013. I'm Jeff Cummings, and today in the Finice Monitor, I'll be speaking with the head coach of the Xavier University swim team, Brent McDonald. Though his Musketeers are 1-3 so far this season, they are swimming tough, but last week they gained a much more important distinction. Both the men's and women's teams posted a 100% graduation rate this year, something only 17 other Division I schools can boast. And Coach McDonald joins us now via Skype from Cincinnati. Coach, great to see you. How are you today? Well, you've been busy this season. Your, your men and women have been swimming four meets so far. Um, tell us how the team's been looking to you. Yeah, we, we've been good. We did add a, a meet a little bit earlier this year uh, to go at the end of September at the uh, Butler Quad meet. So, so I want to see a few teams that, that were swimming at that meet. But... Uh, no, we're, we're off to a good start. We've got a, a few bumps and bruises like, like all teams do, but uh, I've really enjoyed the opportunities to, to get up and race this early in the season. So, How did the men take losing to Miami last weekend by five points? Uh, it, you know, any time we, we, we've always set up that weekend where we swim the University of Cincinnati, uh, who is, is definitely one of our main rivals on Friday night, and then come back and, and swim in Miami, uh, which is only about 40 minutes away on, on that Saturday. So, um, you know, we, we knew they were going to be tough, and, and obviously Pete Lindsay always puts together a, a fantastic team. So we, we're happy to, to really get in there and, and race or really were, were very strong uh, both at the front end and, and off the back end so pleased with with the the overall times uh, just unfortunately uh, tough to drop that one yeah the five points is it's not easy to get over <laughs> well another meet that's on that was on your schedule uh, you guys swam against Louisville obviously a very tough team nation ranked um, you know tell me why you guys put them on your schedule uh, that was something that, that Arthur brought up to me uh, a few years ago uh, it, it's worked out really well we've actually over time accumulated quite a few of our, our student athletes are, are from Louisville or the Louisville area um, and, and so it's kind of nice for them to, to get home and, and swim in a pool that, that they're familiar with uh, but but on the flip side as you mentioned they're, they're an incredibly uh, strong team national ranked swimmers national champions in, in Deluca um, you know, and, and, and so it gives us an opportunity to, to kind of look at, at what that looks like, to, to see what that level of swimming is, is like, as, as obviously we have, have many of our athletes strive to get to that to that point. Uh, um, you know, for, for me as a coach, it, it gives me the opportunity to kind of see what, what they're doing, even if it's only for two or three hours, uh, and, and you, you try and learn what, whatever you possibly can. And, and we we're pretty pleased, to, again, that, that some of our guys were able to get up and race uh, with their guys and, and also, you know, again, very competitive in, in several of the relays as well. I would imagine when, you're, when your team is swimming and gets the likes of Jao DeLuca and Kelsey Worrell and, and others, it, it really makes you highlight what needs to be done in order to get up to their level. So it's probably, well, you know, on paper, you probably look like it looks like a blowout, but it's probably a sure. big learning experience for everybody involved. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, we, we try and take video at all of our meets. And so it's it's great to, to refer back to that one and, and kind of see how the best are doing it and, and how we compare to, you know, what, what some of the best in, in the country are doing, uh, whether it starts underwaters, you know, stroke tempo. Uh, it, it very uh, Quite a bit of learning goes goes through that. And maybe it's tough to, to do that early on in the year. But, you know, at the same time, maybe it's a good thing to, to catch them as, as early as possible. Yeah, do it early in the season. You see all the, the little glitches you have to fix and you don't have to scramble before the big conference meet. Right, right, absolutely. <laughs> well, tell us about some of the swimmers on the men's and women's teams that we should be uh, keeping our eye on. Uh, we've, we've actually got some, some very strong swimmers on, on both sides. Uh, I'd say on the men's side, Chad Thompson uh, is certainly one to look at. He swims uh, both IMs and, and the 200 backstroke. 
uh, those will be his events at conference also. Uh, it, as much as I've, I've tried to not let him think so, he's he, he's also a, a pretty decent sprinter and he'll, he'll find his way onto to quite a few of our relays. Um, you know, certainly has the, the potential to win a few conference championships this year. Um, also, Luke Johans, who's a, a, a very strong 50, 50 freestyler, uh, actually won the, the Atlantic 10 last year in the 50 freestyle and, and looks to, to be continuing to, to get better. Uh, he's six foot seven and a half, so uh, got some natural ability there as well. Uh, on, on the women's side, Carolyn Stewart uh, is, is certainly one of our, our top swimmers, owns, owns quite a few of our backstroke records. Um, you know, and, and, and certainly will again be, be in the discussion for, for winning conference championships this year. Um, and, and McKenna Reif is who is, is a very strong distance swimmer for us and, and you know, is, is, is very tough in, in all of our dual meets and, and certainly will be there at the end of the year. Well, these are just a few of the swimmers that are doing well in the pool, but everybody seems to be doing well outside the pool in the classroom. Congratulations on, this re on being on this list of the NCAA's uh, graduation success rate, 100% of your student athletes graduate from Xavier. That's got to yeah. be a big source of pride for you. Yeah, absolutely. We, that's something that, that we certainly stress, uh, even going through the recruiting process and then as they get onto campus, is, is how important academics are and, and how important that academic success is. Um, you know, as, as it pertains to, to the university, how our, our team is perceived. Uh, you know, at the university and, and even in the country, uh, you know, we take the, the College Swim Coach Association Academic All-American team uh, very, very seriously as well. Um, and, and they kind of know that, that this is a place where where they're going to get the support that they need. I, I think, you know, again, it's, it's not anything major that, that we're doing as, as a staff as far as swimming is concerned, but our academic advisors are, are amazing, the, the support that we get, the, the tutoring help, um, and, and again, the, the administration really feels like that's one of the most important things, but that is the most important thing that, that we do here. Athletics uh, certainly comes second. Obviously, it's very easy for you to, to keep track of what these, these men and women are doing while they're student athletes at the school but once they're done with their eligibility are you still involved with their their studies and, and trying to keep them um, interested in continuing to get that degree yeah absolutely and and we again put that pressure on them to to take care of business within four years you know so that that they are still involved uh, you know they have the the structure of of the sport to, to kind of keep moving forward um, you know, they have the, the continued academic support uh, from, from our advisors. Um, but no, I, I think that kind of starts as juniors, we start talking to them about internships. As, as seniors, we start talking to them about jobs so that they, you know, in their mind, it's, it's already that, hey, I, I need to graduate in May so that I can start a job in, in June or July. Um, so, yeah, we, we certainly continue to, to stay on top of them. And, and I, I think the easiest way to do that is just. You make sure they're on pace to, to take care of it in four years. Well, you guys are one of only uh, 17 schools in the nation to have both the men's and women's swim team have perfect graduation rates. Is there any kind of competition between the men and women to say, you know, if you guys, if you guys don't slip up because, you know, it kind <laughs> of ruins our, our prestige around the country? Um, you know, I don't necessarily know that there's a, a, any sort of ill will towards towards one or the other to, to or you know I guess support to make sure that they they all get get everything taken care of um, you know they certainly don't want to don't want to see one team make it and the other team not uh, at, at times actually there's there's competition when they they look at GPAs we, we try and be pretty competitive with that as well um, you know the between the guys and the girls but um, I, I think they all kind of know internally that, that it's in their best interest. Uh, you know, we try and make them as, as self-sufficient as possible and, and be accountable for, for what they want to achieve. And, and you know, that kind of keeps them on, on pace most often. Well, you guys are going to be having a, uh, some more great meets coming up in November. You got, I understand you guys are going to the USA Swimming Nationals in Knoxville. Is that correct? Yeah, we do. We have uh, we have three guys and uh, and and one female that'll that'll be going. Uh, we actually have a, a few relays qualified this year too, so uh, that'll be fun to to kind of go up and, and bring a few extra for for relays to to swim at that meet. And just again with with us, it's it's all about exposure to to that environment. So we're we're pretty excited about that. Yeah, and then definitely it'll give those kids that get to go 
a little bit more exposure to what they can achieve, you know, beyond the conference level, especially. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, Coach, we're looking forward to seeing how this all progresses, not just in the pool, but I mean, it's obviously something, like I said, a major uh, source of pride for you guys to have this perfect graduation rate, and we'll see how long this, this continues for you. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Well, before we leave, though, we want to submit you to our final five. These are okay. five questions we got for you to kind of get to know you a little better. We asked this of all our guests. We had some very interesting answers. We're looking forward to yours. Uh, okay. First question is, if you could change the order of strokes in the individual medley, how would you change it? I'd, I'd probably try and make it as tough as possible. If we're really going to mix it up, let's, let's go ahead and make it tough. So go freestyle first, backstroke second. Uh, maybe breaststroke third and, and fly last just to, to see who's, who's got the most toughness coming home. Okay. Besides swim coach, what's a career you would most like to try? Uh, I'd, I'd probably be interested in, in being involved in, in some level of, of maybe professional sports. Uh, it's kind of something I, I did a little bit after, after college, and so I certainly would love to be involved with, with some sort of professional team. And what's a career you would not like to try? Uh, I would say compliance. Uh, they they tend to, to be the the parent that either always to say no or you know is is unfortunately the bearer of bad news quite often. Uh, so I, I probably wouldn't want to be involved in compliance too much. Okay. If there, uh, what's a swimming rule that you would add or change to the swimming rule book? Um, hope I don't take too much flack for this, but we don't we don't currently have a diving team, and and so sometimes. That can affect us in, in meets. Uh, so I love if swimming and diving were, were maybe scored separately. You're not the first to say it, so don't, <laughs> don't think that. Uh, last question, Coach. Where do you like to go most for vacation? Uh, my wife's family has, has a place uh, down outside of Augusta, Georgia, and it's very quiet on a golf course. It's probably my favorite place to go. It is beautiful, beautiful place to be. Well, Coach, we hope you get some time for vacation soon. You got, you definitely deserve it. You guys, you guys, your guys and girls are doing very well, not just in the pool, but out of the pool, as we said. So thanks so much for joining us, and good luck the rest of the season. Thanks a lot, Jeff. And our thanks to you for joining us for today's Morning Swim Show. Be sure to check in with SwimmingWorld.com regularly for news from aquatic sports. Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. I'm Jeff Cummings. Thanks for watching.